Welcome to this program that is part of the Our Finger Lakes History series. I am Seneca County Walter, Seneca County historian Walter Gable. This program deals with Taganic Falls State Park. We have many beautiful waterfalls on streams that empty into the various Finger Lakes. The tallest of these waterfalls is Taganic Falls. This map shows the several state parks located in the Finger Lakes area. Taganic Falls State Park is located on the west side of Cayuga Lake, approximately nine miles north of Ithaca. The park consists of 750 acres. Taganic Falls State Park had an estimated 479,305 visitors in 2018, roughly half a million. This New York State Park was established in 1925. Besides the magnificent Taganic Falls, park visitors can swim, picnic, and camp within the park. There is no fully accepted, clear explanation of the origin of the name Taganic. We know it comes from Native American culture, but they did not have much of a written language. There is the story that Taganic was, Dela was a Delaware ch Indian chief whose war party was defeated by Cayuga Indians near the waterfalls. A more commonly accepted origin is that the word is a combination of the Onondaga word Dehonic and the Algonquin word Takan. The word Taganic roughly means the great falls in the woods. Now there are actually three major waterfalls within the park. Shown here is the Upper Falls. The Upper Falls is located about three quarters of a mile west or upstream from the famous main waterfalls. This Upper Falls has a 100 foot drop. This Upper Falls is easily viewable by parking at the upper parking lot of the park and simply walking about 200 yards to a viewing bridge across the stream. Of course, the Middle Falls is the Great Taganic Falls. Its 215 foot drop makes it higher than Niagara Falls. Of course, Taganic Falls does not have the volume of water that Niagara Falls has. You can get a great view of this Taganic Falls from the Falls Overlook or by walking up the Gorge Trail. Visible from New York State Route 89 is this lower falls of the park. This lower falls has a drop of about 15 feet. It is a three quarters of a mile walk from the parking lot along Route 89 to the main waterfalls that is the highlight of the park. In this trail walk, you can observe closely the nature of the gorge. Like most of the streams that empty into Cuga Lake and Seneca Lake, the gorge was formed as Taganic Creek eroded through more than 400 feet of shale. That eroded shale was deposited in a broad delta on the west side of Cuga Lake. That delta is where the lawn, beach, and marina areas of the park are located today. Unlike the gorge at Watkins Glen State Park, the gorge of Taganic Falls State Park is rather flat, broad, with high walls. In the gorge walk, you can easily see how over thousands of years, the soft shale of the Geneseo Formation has been eroded away down to the Tully limestone at the bottom of the gorge. This is a view of the gorge just west of that main waterfalls. 
You can easily see how the creek has eroded down through several layers of soft shale. Shown here is a picture of a man who has been walking through the gorge trail and is approaching the viewing spot that is closest to the waterfalls itself. The cap rock is the resistant rock over which the Taganic Falls tumble. This cap rock is sandstone of the Sherburn Formation. The rocks immediately above the cap rock are the Ithaca Formation. Taganic Falls is a beautiful view all times of the year. Personally, I like this fall view the best. Under the right conditions in winter, the gorge around the falls becomes a beautiful, ice-covered site. This is another ice view. Now let me begin to explain how Tiganic Falls and its gorge were created by natural events in the last 12,000 years. There are basically two types of natural events that have created Taganic Falls as we know it today. One of these natural events is the impact of this area having been covered with glaciers the last two million years. The other is the seasonal process of erosion of soft rock because of frost and freezing followed by spring melting. Two million years ago, there were no Finger Lakes and no Taganic Falls. Instead, there was a system of shallow river valleys where the lakes are today. Several times over the last two million years period, New York State was bulldozed by vast continental ice sheets or glaciers that were thousands of feet thick. The glaciers plowed through the river valleys, changing them into deep troughs with steep sides. The most recent glacier melted from the region 12,000 years ago, leaving Cayuga Lake and the 10 other Finger Lakes in deep glacial troughs. Dammed up by glacial deposits to the south, and retreating glacial ice to the north, the melting water filled the steep-sided river troughs. As the glacier retreated further north, the level of Cayuga Lake began to drop. Today, the lake's elevation is 600 feet lower than the ice-dammed lake of about 12,000 years ago. 12,000 years ago, Taganic Creek plunged directly into Cayuga Lake. Taganic Creek rather easily eroded away the shale cliffs of the creek. Stone by stone, the shale cliff hillside of the creek yielded to Taganic Creek's tireless flow. The great waterfalls we so enjoy today is the result of Taganic ero Creek eroding away the shale layers three quarters of a mile back from Cayuga Lake. The soft shale layers are very susceptible to breaking up from freezing, much more so than limestone. In winter, wet shale rocks freeze and fracture. The frost covered excuse me, the frost fractured rocks crash from the cliffs any time of the year, widening and lengthening the gorge. Remember that initially Taganic Creek emptied directly into Cuga Lake without the 215 foot waterfalls that we have today. But the today the waterfalls is approximately three quarters of a mile away from Cuga Lake because of the erosion of the shale layers of rock in the roughly last 12,000 years. 
During floods, Taganic Creek washes mud and fallen rocks all the way to Cayuga Lake. When the creek meets the calm water of Cayuga Lake, nearly a mile from Taganic Falls, the creek drops its cargo of mud and rocks. This has created the little delta called Taganic Point, where the day-use areas of the park are now located. This aerial view shows the gorge and the delta plain that juts out into Cayuga Lake. The delta plain was created by the rock and dirt that was carried down to Gannett Creek, especially during flooding, and deposited along the shore of Cayuga Lake. That delta plain today is the site of the picnicking and swimming areas of Taganic Falls State Park. Now for some of the human history. Prior to the Revolutionary War, there was an Iroquois Indian settlement at Taganic Point. By the time that European Americans or whites came into this area, the Indian village had been abandoned but their corn patches and their orchards were still extant. Abner Truman, a retired Revolutionary War soldier, is said to have transplanted apples from these orchards to his nearby farm. George Goodwin of Jacksonville settled on the point and took over the old orchards, so the point became known as Goodwin's Point. In 1790, Samuel Weyburn settled on the point. You will note that the Indian Villages marker states that the first settlement came in 1794, but that appears to be wrong. But the white settlers realized something. The falls provided a great source of water power for various mills. Shown here is a paper mill on the creek. Above the Upper Falls, there were various mills as early as 1814. Of course, the point itself made for a great stopping place for steamboats on Cayuga Lake to transport materials to and from these mills. Visitors to Taganic Falls State Park can see the Great Falls without having to walk three quarters of a mile up the gorge trail. Visitors can drive on the side road on off Route 89 and park at the Falls Overlook and get a rather beautiful view of Taganic Falls from that overlook. Shown here is a picture of visitors enjoying the Falls Overlook sometime prior to 1896. The State Park completed renovations to the Falls Overlook so that today we have a good parking area and a new visitor center with nice restrooms as well as a gift shop. The Falls Overlook was first developed in 1850 when J.S. Halsey built a hotel there. It was originally called the Cataract Hotel. It was right near the Great Falls in the woods. After significant enlargement and upgrades to the Cataract Hotel, the hotel was renamed the Taganic House in 1866. During this time period, the hotel was advertised as accessible from all parts of the country. Trains brought visitors to both ends of Cayuga Lake and then steamboats would bring the visitors to Goodwin's Point or Taganic Point. And finally, a very sto st short stagecoach ride would get visitors to the hotel. In 1872, the hotel was purchased by John M. Thompson. During his proprietorship, Thompson undertook a couple of special events to attract visitors. One of these events was having a Canadian stuntman known as Professor Jenkins cross the gorge on a tightrope. The second event was the revelation of a stone man who became known as the Taganic Giant. 
Today, we clearly understand that the Tagonic giant shown here was a hoax, but at the time of its discovery in July 1879, many people, even scientists at Cornell University, believed that it really was a petrified stone giant man. This Tagonic giant was dug up on the property of Thompson's Tagonic Hotel. The giant had actually been made by local men that Thompson got to mix up a thick batter composed of grease, beef blood, iron filings, and a special plaster of cement that was then baked in a huge oven until that mixture was rock hard. Thousands of people flocked to see this Taganic giant, with many staying at Thompson's Taganic Hotel. The hotel was purchased in the 1890s by George Freer, and it remained prosperous until 1905. Freer left the hotel business because of illness in 1915, and the hotel began to deteriorate. In 1922, a group of investors bought the hotel. They had just started renovations to ho the hotel when a fire ignited in one of the chimneys and burned the hotel to the ground. On January 12, 1925, the property consisting of 64 acres was purchased by the newly formed Finger Lake State Park Commission and soon became Taganic Falls State Park. Later acquisitions increased the size of Taganic Falls State Park to its present 737 acres. On the night of July 7, 1935, a great flood ripped, ripped through this gorge, just like there was flooding throughout the southern Finger Lakes. At 10 o'clock that evening, some young people were having a picnic in a park pavilion near Cayuga Lake. Because of heavy rain, they wanted to remain all night, but someone persuaded them to go home. The group crossed the highway bridge moments before it washed out. Soon after, the pavilion itself and the ground under it were carried away by the rushing floodwaters coming down the stream. Later that same night, a mill located more than a mile upstream was swept down the gorge and over the Great Taganic Falls. The rush of water was said to be so loud that the falls could be heard from across Cayuga Lake. In this visual, you see rubble at the base of the falls at the time of this event. In this picture, you see how the highway was washed out. This picture comes from the U.S. Department of the Interior's investigative report of this July 1931-1935 flood. This picture shows the destruction to the road called Taganic Boulevard by this July 1935 flood. The road was rebuilt. The park was cleaned up, reopened, and has been enjoyed for many, many years now. The Falls Overlook, as shown in this picture, is one of the most visited sites in the Finger Lakes. The Falls Overlook provides a very easy way to see Taganic Falls all seasons of the year without having to walk up the trail. I hope you have enjoyed this piece of our Finger Lakes history.